word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the giants and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. As we are going to continue, the corporate witness as well as the individual witness, we need to understand that we, the believers of this church age, who have been given the joy which shall surpass the great joy of this earth which they could find momentarily when they have been blessed into the realm of their stupidified thoughts, thinking that which is of no value is of a great importance of value in their life. The same thing which is necessary for them to enjoy today, the same thing will be an outdated one for them tomorrow. As the time elapses, the technology elapses. But dear brethren, the word of the Lord is consistent. We can enjoy a constant joy in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to enjoy that constant joy, the Lord has constantly given to us His word. The Lord has given to us after believing in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for our salvation. The permanent indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that as we take in portion by portion in the word of the Lord, our joy could be rejoicing in Christ, the hope of glory. But dear brethren, we the believers, as well as the things pertaining to be pastors, we are also following the same trend of this world. The cosmos diabolicus thinking. The same trend wherewith you and I are thinking that the temporary momentary satisfaction in this earth is greater pleasure than the pleasure what we can search in Bible doctrine. The greatest pleasure for all time, though the heaven and earth will perish, is none other but his mind, his thinking, his word. And we don't have any other pleasure in this earth apart from getting upon into Bible doctrine day in and day out. And this great pleasure is what is lacking today in our pulpits to the pastor teacher. The pastor teacher doesn't have any pleasure at all today as such how he has to communicate this word. The pastor teacher doesn't bother about the reality of Bible doctrine far less he can concentrate and emphasize for them about these individual witnesses and corporate witnesses, though we are into the completion of the church's doctrine. Upon our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's ascension, being sat down at the right hand of Lord God the Father to await the completion of his royal family as the church age, which plays out on the stage of human history, the only prophetic events concerning the church age are its beginning on the day of Pentecost, which was prophesied by Christ in John 14, 16 through 17, John 16, 7 through 15, Acts 1, 5, and its termination at the resurrection of the church when the royal family, those who are Christ's, is completely formed. The church age will end and believers will be transformed to heaven in 1 Corinthians 15, 23. The rapture or exit resurrection from the Greek ex Anastasis describes the movement of all church age believers will be removed from the devil's world forever. No one knows at what point in the future the rapture will occur. Setting dates is fallacious. God only decides the timing. Matthew twenty four forty two, Mark thirteen thirty two. All we know is that it will happen suddenly in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye as per 1 Corinthians 15, 52. And in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven 
with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. The voice of the archangel will be the royal family sound of victory. These are Christ's warriors called to assemble in order to meet the Lord in the air. Every church age believer will be immediately transformed from a body sown as perishable in corruption and dishonor to a body raised as imperishable in eternal incorruption and power in 1 Corinthians 15, 42-43. What a great privilege it is for us in that great resurrection body to have the escrow contract fulfilled rather than to possess only the resurrection body and nothing to show forth in the heaven. And to possess something right now is to give desire for love, desire for truth, love for God, perseverance, motivation, momentum, sharing the happiness of God when we have an incredible stability and strength of character in time for the importance of Bible doctrine. This new body, a resurrection body, will be like him, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, a recognizable body of flesh and bones that is free from the old sin nature, as per 1 John 3, 2. The scriptural descriptions of Christ's resurrection body reveal what resurrected believers will be given. The resurrected Christ appears to be to the disciple numerous times in Matthew 28, 9 through 10, Mark 16, 12 through 14, Luke 24, 25, Luke 24, 36, John 20, 19 and 26, Acts 1, 3, 1 Corinthians 15, 5 through 7. Even in this new body, he was recognizable to them. His resurrection body retains the scars from the nails in his body, in his hands, and feet as well as the wounds in his side. Christ's resurrection body has substance, flesh and bones, as per Luke 24, 39 through 40. And he can be touched and felt, John 20, 17. It can walk through stones or closed doors, Luke 24, 36. His resurrection body breathes, John 20, 22. And eats, Luke 24, 42 to 43. In resurrection body, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can move unaided in both vertical and horizontal planes. Matthew 28, 10, Acts 1, 9 through 10. He can suddenly appear and just as suddenly disappear. Luke 24, 31. This is a description of the resurrection body. Christ will transform the body of our humble state into conformity to the body of his glory as per Philippians 3, 21. Immediately after the rapture, there will be a period of fantastic happiness and celebration, a reunion of the entire royal family assembled for the first time in spontaneous mass, recognition of Christ. This time of worship and of breaking into song will culminate as Christ leads the entire royal possession to heaven. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to me as per Romans 14, 11. A shocking contrast will occur when the celebration gives way to grave solemnity. The Lord Jesus Christ will convene court. Church age believers will be summoned to the judgment seat of Christ or the Bema seat where each one of us shall receive, shall give account of himself to God. The Greek term Bema literally means a step, portrays a seat or raised platform where a judge sits to adjudicate, to adjudicate a case. This is the judgment seat of Matthew 27, 19, John 19, 13 and Acts 18, 12. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will evaluate the deeds of each believer and distribute rewards based on how he executed the church age spiritual life, how effectively he witnessed for the prosecution, the tactical victories he won. In Second Corinth in First Corinthians four five, therefore do not go on passing judgment before the time of the evaluation by Christ, but wait until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the things hidden in the darkness and disclose the motives of men's heart, and then each man's praise will come to him from God. In Second Corinthians five ten, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may be recompensed, rewarded for his deeds in his body, in the body that is during the li during his life on earth, according to what he has done, whether good, divine, or bad, worthless, human good. This scriptural account of Christ's one-on-one -on -one evaluation dramatizes God's objective for the believer while on earth. Therefore, learn Bible doctrine, gain spiritual momentum, apply divine viewpoint to life, and come to love God and produce divine good. If the believer stays the course in pursuit of spiritual maturity, God will be glorified. For this believer, God has fantastic blessings waiting in eternity. Scripture calls them the surpassing riches of his grace that include every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies as per Ephesians 1, 3, 7 and 2, 7. These rewards and blessings are above and beyond the normal blessings of heaven such as those described in Revelation 21:11. 11. 
which one for this surpassing grace blessings include the crown of righteousness as per second timothy 4 8 the crown of life james 1 12 the privilege of wearing the uniform of glory a uniform of translucent light over the resurrection body revelation 3 4 and 18 ruling with jesus christ on earth during the millennium second timothy 2 12 a revelation 2 26 3 21 an inscribed pillar in the temple revelation 3 12 a and several other special honors received from the hand of jesus christ himself these are some of the glorious decorations of tactical victory, the rewards reserved exclusively for the believer who stands firm on God's power and God's word. Dear brethren, we will enjoy that if we only grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine by giving number one priority for his word. And you will never enjoy that if you are not going to give number one priority to execute this protocol plan of God, the unique spiritual life. So which way you want to go, you decide. We shall continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life, in order to be telling to Lord God the Father that we believe upon Christ. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believers, the great matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, so that, dear brethren, the greater the doctrine you can utilize, the greater will be for you for to reward to receive those rewards personally from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at the judgment seat. Therefore, do not waste your time, rebound and get back into fellowship and learn Bible doctrine. For the pastor teaches the great man it is to communicate the word, wherewith he is going to receive the crown of glory for the communication that has been done. And above all, we do have one more thing, which is the I am out from my witnesses, indwell in Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, so that not only the Trinity which indwells is the I am out from my witnesses, not only the Bible, even the witnesses could be our hearers, as our I am out from my one. If there are no hearers to our doctrine, not worry, dear brethren, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But the ultima is that we have to communicate the doctrine, we have to take in the doctrine, and we have to give number one priority for Bible doctrine. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. As such, we await the resurrection body and we await the true crown of glory at the judgment seat of Christ. We continue tomorrow. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou was going to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it as also a blessing and challenge our in Lord. Father, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.